Hi there friends and welcome to my ideology guide for RimWorld. I am Icon and in this video I will explain how the actual ideology mechanics in the same name DLC work. I will explain to you what an ideology is, what it does for you, we're going to handcraft a simple one and I'm going to explain the options that you have there and after that I'm going to guide you through the functionalities of our handcrafted ideology and after that you should have had not too many spoilers and have understood enough to go crazy with your own ideologies. So first off, what is all this fuzz about? The ideologies that give your people new rules, new boundaries, they also unlock new roles, which are kind of like character classes for your uh, for colonists, rituals, buildings and relics and a lot of other things. So let's take a more obvious example for a wonderful example are cannibal ideologians because they are very very uh, self-explanatory so as you see here as a follower of the neo divinism we have to follow cannibalism and we will get mood boosts if we do so we will get we will get mood debuffs if we don't and that's just one example of what we can do. So we're going to dive right into the creation of a custom ideology and I'm going to explain the rest along the way. What I want to say before I start now explaining all this, ideology gives you the opportunity to put up a rule grid, a, a set of rules for your own roleplay idea, which is awesome because I had so many ideas for runs in the past which just didn't, uh, didn't come together because, you know, Back in the day before ideology, we would have had a, we would have needed a, a colony full of cannibals to make that work. The trade cannibalism was necessary. Now we can adjust that just with the ideology, and it's really really cool. Okay, with well, that being said, let's get into this actual crafting. First, we need to decide about the structure. As you see here, there's different structures: Christian, Hindu. Islamic, but also things like ideological, where people believe that there are no gods. These guys love to burn religious symbols. We have people who believe that gods are walking amongst the planets like us, and so on and so forth. These decisions are mostly fluff. They also define what kind of style your uh, colony will have. For example, you will have a Christian style if you go for a Christian origin. Islamic style. These are variations of certain types of furniture which just make your colony look according to its Islamic origin, for example. I say 50% fluff because a couple of these backgrounds also unlock certain gameplay mechanics. We will go for the sake of simplicity for a ideology which thinks that gods are among us because that doesn't really lock or unlock anything else. Choose that to your own liking. These are all legitimate uh, options and while you're creating your own custom religion, you can reset that later down the road if you want to. Next step, we get to choose our memes. Memes are not funny pictures in this uh, scenario. They are ideas and basic rule sets of your, of your ideology. They are sorted by high, medium and low impact on the gameplay. You get to choose one to, two, one to four of those. As you see here, they all come with pretty self-explanatory labels, ranters. They believe that raising animals is the right way, raising plants to eat is not. So if you go for a ranching meme, your people want to have meat eating. You also unlock a role of the animal specialist and I will talk about these things later. For the sake of simplicity, we're going to pick up a rancher ideology for this tutorial. But as you see here, there's tons of other things. We're, we're going to go for raiders too, because these are fun as well. Fun too. Raiders, they, uh, they have their own set of beliefs. And for now, we're just going to take that. You can mix and match however you want as long as you don't pick more than four. Down here you see also the overall impact on your gameplay. This is a rough estimate on how much difference the memes you have chosen will make to your gameplay. But I'll explain all of that later down the road. So once we're done with that, we get to this screen. So now you see we are one ideology among many. So we have here the rancher and the raider meme. 
Down here, we have now a list of all the things that come with this. This is automatically generated by the memes you have chosen. So because we are ranchers and raiders, we have precepts, that's uh, basically rules, about meat eating. So our people get a 16 points mood debuff if they eat non-meat. Our people want to raid every 25 days or otherwise they get mood debuffs too. And also they get a global work speed debuff because of that. I don't know why, but that's just, uh, well, they believe that they are no laborers. You see here, ranching is a central precept here too. And this changes a lot of things. So for ex for one, the mood of all people would get will get better the more animals we have and worse the less animals we have. But also we change the stats of people with this ideology too. So we get more butchering efficiency, we get more plant work speed, we get to teach our animals better. That's all bound to the rancher meme. And as you, if you mouse over these things, you also see which precepts are linked to the, uh, to the meme there. So there's a couple of rules more, how to think about executions, how to think about fungus, about scarification, if we should put the skulls of our enemies on a spike or not, and so on and so forth. Every single one of these rules can be clicked and adjusted. So if you feel like meat eating strictly required is too much for you, be a wuzz and go for mildly required in lowering these debuffs. This, how you, how you adjust these things is entirely up to you. But as you see here, some things have to be put up in a way as as, as it is related to your main meme. So when you have the raider meme, you can't just remove the raiding precept because it's part of your lifestyle. So you can't just uh, re um, set up how hard it will impact you. A lot of these uh, decisions are actually, well, I would call it cherry picking. You do act actively decide how hard or easy it will be to play with your ideology. So, do that to your own liking. This is a sandbox game after all, so you don't need to mind too much. Oh, I totally skipped the deities. I'm sorry, guys. The deities are completely fluff. They don't mean anything. You can add deities and remove deities just like you want to. You can also edit them here and call, give them names and change their gender, whatever you want. You can basically create your own fantasy kingdom here. So... If you ever feel like changing something up, clicking on this uh, icon here gets you back to the structure selection. Clicking on this icon here, whoops. Clicking here on the memes gets you back to the, onto the selection screen. And also you can here choose what kind of style your people should have if you want to define that by yourself, because maybe you want to. For this one, we're going to take a rustic one because we are friggin' ranchers. So that's about precepts. You can change it however you want. Just keep in mind, some of these precepts can't be changed because of the lack of some memes or the presence of some memes. For example, if you have the transhumanist meme, you can configure your people to love nutrient paste. So ranching, this precept only comes because you are we are ranchers. You can add precepts here, and there's a lot of other rules which can be added. But as you see here, a lot of them are grayed out because we are lacking the required memes. But basically here, you can tinker your own set of rules. If you want to have, for some reason, a rancher faction which doesn't allow mining, there you go. If you want to have charity, there you go. There's really a lot of things which allow you to individualize your uh, your your culture here, which is really cool if you want to go for role playing things. But what's even more important is we've talked about uh, the precepts now enough are the roles, the rituals, the buildings, and the relics, and all these things down there. So roles, as you see here are roles which come from your memes and your 
yeah, your rules basically. They they define which roles can be assigned. Leader and moral guide are always pre uh, present there. Moral guide is kind of like your priest of this uh, of the ideologian. These other roles here, like the melee specialist and the shooting specialist, uh, here you see they are bound to certain memes. Because we are ranchers, we can put up the animal specialist. I'm going to leave it like that and explain more about that once we get to the second part of that video, because all this makes more sense when you have it in game. Rituals here, I want to explain them here in in short words. As you see, there are different rituals like how to bury people, social festivals, dance parties, and gladiator ritual um, duels. There's a lot of other rituals which you can add here. Their description is in the tooltips. I don't want to explain them here too thoroughly. I just want to pinpoint three things. An exclamation mark means that these are only doable after something has happened. You know, well, you get the idea. <laughs> A icon with this calendar here means that this festival here has to happen on the 4th of September. If not, people get unhappy because they can't follow their ideology and therefore if you have these in your uh, plate in your uh, in your list you need to prepare them when once it's time for that these one with a clock can be done at any time beyond that well i mean symbol burning social festival they what they how they work is in the tooltip the only thing which is really worth mentioning the reward you get from that can be defined. So if you want to have certain rewards, you can configure that. If you don't like to have a random recruit whenever you do that party, you can just uh, select something else. As you see, some of these rewards are also linked to memes. Discovery of an ancient complex is something which we will do. Let's keep that for later though. Let's see, I did configure rank. So buildings, this section gives you the option to select which kind of buildings are connected to the ideologian. So we see here we can add a let's remove that. We can add a altar of our own liking. There can be only one type of altar. Once we've selected an altar, as you see the other types of altar are grayed out. So you need to select that to your own liking. A a ritual sculpture these can be made at the artist's bench and a ritual seat where people can sit at. Of course, according to other things, you can just uh, you add up things as you want them. But as you see here, this tree needs the associate, uh, associated ritual to actually have it as a ideologist building. building. So you can't just uh, put them up as you want to. The other way around, you can't have a Christmas tree party without a Christmas tree. Also, you can ch uh, set up at which date or at any time these things can be done. It's all entirely up to you. We're going to remove that for now. Of course, naming can be randomized. That can be put up to you by yourself as well. Here, relics. Relics are items which are sacred to your ideology and you can really just uh, add in whatever you want. So the relics can be everything like salt rifles or whatever. These can be found when you do certain quest lines later down the road and they basically can be used as uh, relics for pilgrims and attracting people to your uh, ideology. This is late game stuff. You should basically just select something which you like. Much more interesting is the weapons uh, preference here. So if we go for, let's say, melee and ranged, here we see we can swap we can say that it is noble to fight with ranged weapons and despise to fight with melee weapons. Of course, this can be swapped as vice versa. So people will get mood buffs if they kill people with ranged weapons and the other way around. You can do all manner of crazy things there. And this is even more a way to specialize the, culture of your ideology basically here the venerated animals thing works quite similar it's like if the boomalope is venerated don't eat it don't kill it 
have as many of this as possible to make people happy. And last but not least, there's also a preferred apparel. You can just uh, select if a cowboy hat, for example, should be a standard piece of gear. And here you can select if it's either relaxed or strong. This just uh, gives a information about how high the impact is if somebody is wearing it. You can also set up that male are uh, meant to wear cowboy hats, uh, men, sorry, talking is hard sometimes, and women get to, uh, to uh, wear whales and, and so on and so forth. There's a ton of individualization things. I think you got the idea by now. So we're going to start a game with this ideology and see you guys in game. Now there, on the planet, we have arrived in our wonderful new environment. So when you check out now the needs tab, you see that she's happy because she's wearing a whale. And these are the first things that happen because of our ideology. You can always check out your ideology on this tab. And most interestingly enough, a lot of things can be still changed later down the road. Or, well, wait a sec, they can't, okay. that worked a day ago. Ah, oh, yeah, here, that's what you can change. You can still change what kind of, uh, or check out what kind of beards and uh, hairdresses are allowed here. If you want to change anything, you have to do it at the beginning of the game. Once uh, these are set up, they are set up. The only thing which oddly enough works are the deities, but okay. Anywho, now we see what we have, uh, what our rules are and now we get to talk about these roles and rituals. So as you see here, there's a leader, a moral guide, an animal specialist and all these things. And if you mouse over them, you get a description. So as leader, you get a couple of abilities and you get a role in rituals, for example, these down here. And as a priest, you have the same things and you have a couple of requirements. So you need to wear some uh, pieces of clothing, which you can um, define when you are defining the roles on the screen we were at before. And they also have, well, these abilities, which we'll explain in a minute. On top of that, there's these specialists, which come from your memes. The moral guide and the leader are present in every ideology. These specialists are dependent on your memes. And here I want to explain one of these uh, specialists. So the animal specialist, if you transform one of your people into that, he will be insanely good at training animals, taming animals, and will ha have a massively reduced hunting revenge chance. He has some requirements. He needs to be a faith holder, which means he needs to be of a certain faith of these people, and he needs to have an animal skill, uh, skill of six. Then he will lose his skills of working, cooking, construction, and so on and so forth. So what's really important is these specialists shouldn't be selected at the beginning of the game because you will heavily gimp your colonist if you do so. Same goes for the shooting specialist. All these specialists really make narrow down the activities of that person massively. Unlike the leader and the moral guide, these are just, uh, well, add-ons. So. To be a good leader or a good moral guide, you should try to select people with a high social rating. So Anya and Nails are pretty good for that uh, in that regard. And to set up roles, you need to go into the social tab, which has now this little bar here, which depicts the certainty of your people. As you see, the certainty here changes by, two point, point, by a plus of two person per day because her mood is good. This is a really simple reflection. If people are unhappy in your in, under your ideology, they lose faith and vice versa. I like that. So here you can also assign the role. We're going to make Anya to the divine boss, which is the title of, that, of the leader here. And now it tells me that she will want to wear a broad wrap. Roles have certain pieces of clothing and as you see here she will be now unhappy because she's not wearing the divine boss apparel so but what's way, way more important now is she has gained a set of skills we're going to transform nails into the uh, priest here or moral guide 
and we will see the same thing. So the leader of a ideology has new skills. A combat command, which is, insa is an insanely powerful buff. So you will have a aura which boosts the combat efficiency of people. You see the radius. This will last for a day. You can also put a person on work drive, 50% more work speed. You can accuse somebody of a, uh, of a crime. Well, we have no uh, spot set up for that yet, but we're going to get there. And you can also put up a speech. The priest has the ability to convert people, to reassure, increase the faith of somebody, or counsel somebody, which will at cancel the effects of a sad memory, so if your social skill of the priest is good enough, you can cancel out these bad memories, sometimes like the loss of a loved one and all these things. And last but not least, they can preach for health, which is insane because this will give you wound healing and immunity gain. So we will, I will show you one thing here. Once you use that, it goes poof, and then you have a cooldown of 10 days. So these skills, the leader skills, can be used once every 10 days, but the combat command skill is really good, giving you more accuracy and all the kind of uh, wonderful things. So the priest here has a similar behavior. You see they, the skills will go on cooldown too. Let's uh, put Eilina on a reassurance to give you an example. What happens there? And here we go. Her certainty has uh, has, ra has been raised, and here the priest's skills only have a cooldown of three days, as you see here. So now I'm going to introduce the other things uh, that make it possible to go for rituals. So as you see here, there's dance parties and all these uh, wonderful things. And to do these, every ritual has prerequisites. You see down there, focus objects, a light ball or a ritual spot. Light ball and loudspeakers must be powered. Okay, so we know that we need to put up a light ball and all these things. Whoops. And here the misc mode has been loaded with a lot of new items. So seriously, ideology features a ton of new items here. So here we find our altar linked to our ideology and all manner of different things. So when we put up an altar, you see there's a... Uh, graphic of how to read that. We get that. And now we have a spot where we could do these rituals. But as you see, we seem to have not enough, uh, not enough preparations there. So public execution, Minar's Jubilee, we can't do that because of the wrong date. So the only thing we could do for now would be the dance party. So or the social festival. And as you see here, focus objects, any gathering spot, chancel of life, ritual spot. The ritual spot is also a new thing which has was which is, has popped up in ideology. Let's place one down here. And also we're going to place a couple of walls around our little chapel here because everything else would be outrageous. So here we go. Let's put up a door and let's uh, put up our people to construct that and once that's done I'll see you again okay so the basics of a ritual room have been finished now so if we would now begin with a party of faith for example we get this screen this is uh, present for all of your rituals you see here all men all manner of different factors impacting the quality so here we see quality is quite important because the more chances you have for a fun or unforgettable event you will get extra bonuses and therefore we see we need to start at a light ball we need to have a, a, a certain amount of participants we have very low expectations boosting that the room impressiveness is also giving us a bonus so as you see there's a couple of things which we could do to make these things better. So let's do this. All right, so I have just uh, cheekily added some power into our setup because without power, we can't go for a light ball or anything. So let's add in the light ball here and a couple of loudspeakers as the ritual wanted. 
So six of them would be for the maximum bonus, it said. So if we now go for the party of faith, as you see here, we have a pretty high chance. But if we start at the ritual spot, it's worse. I'm doing this because I want to show you that rituals can be started from all manner of different uh, fitting parts. So if we start it now from the light ball, we have a 99% chance of a high quality event. Let's do this. You see, expected duration to all these things. Let's have a party. So now they have party. This is the first ritual we do for our new ideologian. And of course, this can be this can be adapted to whatever you want to. So this was a boring party of faith. So as you see here, it, we had a 99% chance. Fascinating. But we had a boring party and we can't do this now for the next 20 days again. So if we would have had a, a good uh, a good outcome, we would have had a better mood and all these things. Maybe the room wasn't impressive enough for a good outcome, but that's okay. We didn't mean to uh, succeed here for real. But there's another thing that I want to talk about. And if you mouse over your buildings here, you see also that something like the large alt altar has also room requirements. So if we put the altar into a room with, with four columns and all these things, it will be registered as a proper as a proper room. You might want to say so. So here we go. And now that room is uh, considered as a pantheon, which will help the quality of rituals and all these things again. So overall, you might have already gotten the idea how these things work. We can now, of course, go for higher quality flooring and some new standing lamps. And as you see here, these skins of the standing lamps and the tables have changed because of the dominant style. So that's what I uh, was talking about before. Okay, so with these things uh, uh, said and done, you should now understand how all these things work. I mean, you always get a readout what kind of focus object a ritual has. So, for example, for the Sky Lantern uh, Festival, we will need to have a ritual spot or a lit campfire. And the spot must be unroofed with at least 25 unroofed cells in the area. So that means you, you get the information what to do there from, from these rituals. And you can individualize that, like I said, when you start the game. Overall, you now know pretty much all the basics that are behind ideology playing in general. You set up your own rules to your own liking and then you just uh, play on. The most complicated thing was th is the, um, or the most innovative thing, which is new to ever uh, to you guys, is how all these ritual things work. But beyond that, it's a re really simple um, system, as you see here. These uh, cushions also make things better. It's always dependent on the uh, ritual, what kind of uh, furniture pieces you actually need. So you can select those well according to your ideology or ideologin there is nothing more to explain at this point i think if you guys feel like i missed out something really really important feel free to add that because right now the only thing we didn't do yet it was assigning a real specialist but as you see here, we don't have the necessary skills and it works the same like the spiritual and the actual leader. They get new skills, they get new buffs and they, unlike the priest and the actual leader, they lose certain capabilities. So I hope that was helpful for you. And if so, feel free to drop me a comment about that too or leave a thumbs up on that video to make it more visible to other people. And last but not least, of course, check out my channel where I do daily content. You might want to subscribe and turn on those notifications to not miss anything in the future. Have a nice time and see you guys again. Bye bye.